Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Goodness. <laughs> <coughs> That's a great way to start. Happy Monday. Welcome to our Monday video. I'm super excited to hang out with you guys. If you're new to the channel, my name is Bev McCullough and I am super excited to be here with you guys as we stitch along, finish up our great big stitch along. You guys, this has been so much fun for me. You know how much I love embroidery and it's just been a blast seeing your finished hoops and your stitching and how much you guys are loving this. I really, really am excited about that. We are, we've already had questions about if we're going to do another one of these, and the answer is absolutely yes. <laughs> so we're going to mix in stitch alongs with our quilt alongs to kind of vary things up a little bit. And you guys know I like doing small projects too. So we have some really, really fun things scheduled for this year. It's going to be a blast. But before we can do all that, we have to finish up our current project. So I'm just excited to kind of show you how I like to finish hoops. We're going to talk about some different ways for finishing embroidery and give you some ideas for ways you can use your embroidered pieces in different ideas. So we're gonna have a really good time today. I wanna see who all's here. Hello, Allison, over on Facebook. We have Allison and Dawn, Leslie's here, Stephanie's here, hey Stephanie. And over in YouTube, we have uh, Cammie's here from rainy Alabama. It's pretty rainy here today too in Tennessee, Cammie. Um, Dawn is here. Oh, it's rainy in Vermont, too. Are we getting rain everywhere? I know we're not getting rain in Arizona, I don't think. <laughs> Katarina's here. Hello, Sharon, Maureen. Um, and she's not quite caught up. Oh, well, that's okay. There's no timeline on my so longs. <laughs> you know I have very firm feelings about that. Like, it's better to just kind of enjoy and hang out with us than stress about the timeline. So, and Teresa's here. Hey, Teresa. So glad you're here. Okay, y'all, this is going to be really fun, but so this is what we're doing. We just are finished up all the stitching on our cute little embroidery hoops. This is my embroidered bouquet sampler. has some fuzz. Um, so we learned all these stitches that make up this sampler, and this is a free pattern on my blog, so if you're just now tuning in, you can find all the videos in my Facebook group and on YouTube and in my blog posts and you can find tutorials for how to transfer a pattern and for every stitch in here. And today we're going to talk about how I like to finish my hoops and that is with um, how to glue down this back, how I add pom-pom trim because guys know I love pom-pom trim. We will talk more about my ever abiding love for pom-pom trim later and then if you want to how to even finish the back further. So we're going to talk about all those tips. Looks like we might have a tiny bit of um, issues on Facebook, but YouTube seems to be hanging in there okay. So if you're having trouble watching on YouTube, uh, Facebook, maybe hop onto YouTube. Just see what's going on here. Janice says, it's not raining in Nova Scotia, but the snow is melting. Well, hey, how about that? <laughs> I'm all for melting snow. <laughs> and Melinda's here. Hi, Melinda. And Janice is here. Hi, Janice. That's so fun. Okay, so here is my finished version that we made this time. It's really hard to tell that this is pink linen, but I promise it's this beautiful blush um, pink. It's hard to see it on camera, but I'm gonna hold this a little bit closer so you guys can see. That is my finished from our stitch along progress. So I am going to finish this one in just a few minutes, but before we get to that, I want to talk to you about a few things. One is the RBD block challenge it is still going on, of course. And this is last week's block. We have a brand new block coming out next week that I really had a good time sewing. This is the On Point Hourglass block by Melissa Mortensen. And I did a little bit of fussy cutting with this one. If you're not aware, I am sewing with Enchanted Meadow for all of my RBD blocks because it's brand new and I love it. And I'm using this bleached denim confetti cottons as my background. So confetti cottons are Riley Blake's solid. Um, they're so nice and luxurious and I love this bleach denim. It's just the palest aqua color and it looks really good with Enchanted Meadow. So I'm going to hold that up so you guys can see a little bit closer. There you can see that it's blue a little bit better. Um, so you can see I fussy cut the kind of points of that on, on point hourglass 
and it's just a really fun block to sew up. You can have some fun with the fussy cutting on that one. So that's my block for last week, and there's another one coming out this week, so make sure you check out my blog for that tomorrow, and I'll ha always have the link for the pattern, and I put in the video, I embed the video from Riley Blake as well. This time around they're doing a video tutorial for every block, which is so helpful because you can only put so much information on a pattern and all the details that you need to kind of really get the tips and stuff on the blocks are in those videos. So you wanna check those out for sure. Okay, so that's exciting. And then in other news, oh, Carrie's, hi Carrie. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, thanks Diana, she likes the blocks. Hi Pam. Okay, so I did a couple quick scheduling changes. You guys, next week, very exciting starts our quilt along with the a walk in the woods quilt um, this is one of the quilts that I designed to go with enchanted meadow and it's so fun to sew it's kind of got a big square vibe to it so you almost assemble it in the round rather than in rows I mean we're putting rows together but it is really assembled kind of in the round so it's a different take on assembly and I think that you're gonna have a really good time with that so I tweaked the schedule just a tiny bit. Um, so here is our revised schedule. It starts next week, but I actually added two weeks to our schedule because I wanted to give us a little bit more time. I had put one week for the churn dashes, but they're actually assembled in two parts. So I broke those into two weeks and then I added a week between those corner stars and the borders for assembling the quilt top before we add those borders on. So I just didn't want us to rush through it. And so this way we have a few more, a couple more weeks. And so now you can check out that schedule. I'm gonna put this, I just made this new graphic today. So I'm gonna add this to the website and it'll be in all of our blog posts as a reminder about how this is going to go. So this is gonna go a couple more weeks than it was supposed to, but it's gonna be really fun. And so if you've never participated in my sew alongs, what we do is very similar to what we've been doing to our stitch alongs here. The first week is just kind of talking about what fabrics we're choosing. I'm using Enchanted Meadow. <laughs> um, and But you're welcome to sew along with any fabric you like. And um, we are also going to talk about just some tips about going forward. We're going to have a big overarching, overarching, how do you say that? Overarching giveaway, <laughs> a big giveaway that encompasses the entire thing from Lady Bell Quilting. She is going to do long arm quilting for someone that sews along with this sew along and finishes their quilt by July, their quilt top, she is going to long arm it. We're gonna have a big giveaway for that at the end. It's so exciting. But she's also offering a discount on uh, long arming for anyone that sews along that doesn't win. So you you can go to her for a really cool discount on that. And I'm gonna talk more about that next week. So Lady Bell Quilting is our big favorite for this sew along right now. <laughs> but um, there are, so you can sew along with any fabric you like but if you want to sew along with Enchanted Meadow, there are a whole bunch of, excuse me, Enchanted Meadow shops linked in today's video description. Well, the link to that page is linked in today's video description. So you can check out those shops for uh, kits, for fabric. I am, I have one fat quarter bundle of Enchanted Meadow left in the shop because you guys cleaned me out in the sale, which was awesome. I have more coming in but it won't be here until hopefully sometime at the end of this week. I haven't actually checked tracking, so I'm not sure, but I think by the end of this week. So if you wanna go ahead and order from those other shops, that's awesome, please do that, don't wait. Um, and then you can pick up back order bundles, yardage, or you can check out and see if any of those shops still have kits left. There were several shops that did kit up that quilt, so if that is something that you wanna do, this is a great time to go ahead and order that. So we will start that sew along next week and then we're also going to do a sew along after that one is finished with Wildflower Fields. <laughs> That's kind of hard to say. Wildflower Fields quilt. And I moved that back a couple weeks because we moved, I added those two weeks to Enchanted Meadow. So that one will now start June 6th and we'll sew that quilt up together this summer. It's gonna be great. So there are a few shops that did also kit up this quilt, 
and by June I don't know what the supply of Enchanted Meadow will be so if you want to sew along with this quilt with Enchanted Meadow I highly recommend picking up your fat quarter bundle now for that so those are the two sew alongs coming up and it's just going to be super fun we're going to have a great time Throughout the summer, I am also going to scatter in some extra like stitch tutorials. Actually, spring and summer, I'm going to put in some extra stitch tutorials, and we're also going to do some small project sew-alongs on the side. So if you're not wanting to sew up with us on the quilts, I'm going to have a couple other things going along on the side, and it's just going to be really fun summer. And spring. I'm ready for spring. Are you guys? <laughs> Let's, let's just all collectively kind of say we're ready and then hopefully it will be here in time. Um, is Facebook going okay? You guys aren't commenting that you're having problems, but I keep seeing that the live signal is kind of fluctuating. So let me know if you're having a problem over there. YouTube seems to be really good, so I'm not sure if, um, if we're having problems or if it's just me having problems. Kathy over on YouTube said she just got Retro Stitchery, the, my book, and she loves it. I'm so glad, Kathy. Yay. And Teresa, did you get my kit, or did you get the book, or what did you get? <laughs> okay, let's talk about giveaways. Um, because these were the last two weeks in this stitch along, I wanted to have really fun big giveaways for you guys. So last week's giveaway is for this awesome bundle of Hush Hush. Hush Hush is a low volume collection by Riley Blake and it's all designed by different designers. So there's 21 different fat quarters here and it was designed by 21 different people. So they all have a fun different vibe but they all really look great together. So this is a big giant bundle of Hush Hush. You can kind of see how pretty and pale that is. And along with that, I have one of my Flamingo Stilettos. And I also have for you a Needlework Shop pin, an enamel pin. This is also available in my shop in charm form or in needleminder form, but I thought it would be fun to be able to show off a little bit of that Needlework Shop vibe. So that is the giveaway from last week. And the winner is Laura Marshall. And I believe Laura was watching, watching on YouTube last week. So congrats, Laura, if you are watching, um, send me an email, bev at flamingotoes.com with your address, and I will get that out in the mail to you this week. If you are new, my giveaways are very, very easy to enter. All you have to do is comment on these videos, whether you're watching live or you're watching later in the week, and you can do that on Facebook or on YouTube, whichever, wherever you are watching, and that counts as your entry. I can't really include everybody that's watching if you don't comment. I don't know <laughs> because it doesn't tell me your names. But if you comment, that counts as your entry. So it's super easy and super fun to do. So for this week as our big finale, I have a fun prize for you guys. I have for you to get you somebody, somebody started for the Walk in the Woods quilt. I have a fat quarter bundle of Enchanted Meadow. So this has every print in Enchanted Meadow in it. So if you win, you will just need to pick up some background fabric and borders to make up this quilt, some yardage for the border. And to help you out, I have the Walk in the Woods quilt pattern. That's the quilt we're making. So I've got for you the fabric and the pattern so that you are ready for next week. But I also have for you my retro stitchery book because I figured if you're joining us with this stitch along, maybe you've just had a blast stitching and you're ready for a new project. So this book is came out last year. It's really pretty new and it has a ton of fun embroidery projects in it and lots of ways to use embroidery. So there's hoops, there's frames, there's sewing projects and all the instructions for the projects that have sewing in them are included in the book as well. So. It's a super extensive book and lots of fun patterns and projects in here. So hopefully this will give you some inspiration and some fun ideas for sewing a lot for new, new stitching projects. So that is our big, big prize for finishing up our stitch along. I hope you guys are excited about that. So all you have to do to enter to win is leave a comment and I will draw the winner next week. And you might get your fabric a little bit late because next week's our kickoff. But you guys know that it's not a big deal if you're starting a little bit late or if you come in behind or anything like that. Um, 
you can still join in the videos, you can still enter the giveaways, you can share photos of your progress. It doesn't matter if everybody's not at the exact same spot. It's, it's a lot to keep up with. I know, we all have lives. So um, hopefully that will help out somebody. And um, yeah, I hope you guys are excited about that so along too. I'm really super thrilled to be starting it next week and I can't wait to sew up that quilt with you guys. So let's talk about embroidery. Okay, so I'm going to slide this over here and we're gonna talk about all the things. <laughs> okay, so this is in my face. Okay, this is our cute main sample that we did and this is the original that I made. This is on a Riley Blake linen and I did all the stitches with Orophil floss. All of them had three strands of floss except for these big woven roses and those were six strands. And we went through all of that in this series. I like to finish my projects, a lot of my projects, in the hoop. I put them up on frames, or I, I don't put them in frames. I do occasionally frame them, but I can put them right on the wall like this. So I have a big this is a rental house, so I don't have my big display, but I have a big hoop art wall of all sorts of projects. But even if you're doing a gallery wall or if you have a small spot, you could put a couple embroidery projects. Don't be afraid to leave your projects in the hoop. They still look very finished, very cute, and it's just a fun way of keeping them. It's a fun new way of displaying them maybe for you. If you don't like that, you can definitely frame them, and I have a lot of information about finishing hoops in my book retro stitchery so if you want alternative ideas please feel free to pick that up and check those out but today we're going to talk about finishing in the hoop so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about how to get to this from this so my assumption is before you start this process you're going to want all your stitching done and i like to really leave my fabric in the hoop and not take it out from the part of finishing and then especially if I'm going to leave it in the hoop. So I try and get my pattern when I've started centered, um, my fabric, you know, so that the grain looks right, all of my project ready to go so that I don't have to take it in and out of the hoop. That way you don't have to worry about it pressing it or anything like that. However, if you have taken your fabric in and out of the hoop or if your hoop is maybe your project is a little bit off center, you'll want to take this out and recenter it, but you'll probably need to press your project first. And the best way to do that is upside down. So you'll take, I'm not going to take this out of the hoop, but you'll get the gist of it. You'll take it out of the hoop and then you're going to place a towel or a wool mat will work on your ironing board. You don't necessarily want to press on this on a hard surface because you're just going to flatten those stitches even more. So place your towel or your ironing board on so that those stitches or your wool mat on the board so that your stitches have something to sink into and then press your piece on the back of the fabric. And I would try and press as little as possible on those stitches as you can. If you have a, a hoop line that you're trying to get rid of, you don't need to press the whole thing. Just press that hoop line and get, you know, get that out nice and flat without actually pressing. If you do need to press your stitches, you know, if maybe your fabric has gotten wrinkly or something like that, just do it as delicately as you can. Make sure that you don't catch your iron on the wrong side of your stitches. You know, you don't pull anything up, especially if you did any traveling. And that way you're going to protect those stitches as much as possible. If you press on the front, you're, you will flatten those stitches, especially things like your woven roses and your French knots. They will get flat and squished. So that protects your piece from really becoming super, super smushed. <laughs> All right, I just wanna make sure I'm not missing any questions. Maureen says she loves the pom-poms. <laughs> Katarina says she loves Enchanted Meadow. She hopes to get it in Germany. Oh, I'm sorry. You're ordering it in America now. Oh, I know that the overseas shipping is just not awesome, Katharina. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Kathy found some um, linen in your stash this week, so she's planning to hoop some and do more of my designs. Oh, I'm excited. Uh, we're going to talk about ways that you can find some other fun free patterns at the end of the series after the this video, but I'm so excited that you found some linen. Yay! Claudia's here from North Carolina. Hey, Claudia. 
Don, you do not need a mini iron to press. You can abs absolutely use one if you would like to, but I would. you can press with your full size iron. Just be careful as you go, kind of, you know, using the tip if you need to, that sort of thing. Hey, Michelle. <laughs> All right. So what you need to do first is once you have your fabric in your hoop and it's centered and you're happy with that layout, then you're going to make sure it's nice and tight. You don't want any puckering or, or pow, you know, little areas where you can see that it's not nice and flat. So you want to pull your fabric as tight as possible and make sure that your screw is nice and tight. Because after this, once we've glued it in place, there's no reason to undo that screw. <laughs> and that will help hold your fabric in place. So once you have done that, then we're going to trim off this excess fabric. And we're going to trim about a half an inch away from the edge of the hoop. So I'm just using my nice sharp fabric scissors and I'm trimming this edge off all the way around outside of the hoop. It's easier to flip your hoop over so that the back side is facing up and that way you can see where you're trimming and make sure you don't need to really measure this you can eyeball it. Don't trim it too short and don't trim it too long. And I'll explain why in just a few minutes once I get this all trimmed off. So I'm just cutting my excess fabric off. You can do, you can cut your pieces in the round if you want, but I feel like having that extra fabric there allows me to pull my, my fabric in my hoop tighter as I'm stitching. It just gives it a little bit more of that ability to tighten my fabric and keep it nice and tight. So now I've got, I have a funky little point there. Now I've got my fabric trimmed all the way around and you want to trim it. What we're going to do is we're going to glue this down into the inside, the inner hoop. So the inside of the inside hoop. <laughs> Say that three times fast. And you don't want it so long that when you fold your fabric over, it touches this fabric on this side because if you do you will see it and it will look something like this as the, anything that you have that is touching your fabric on the inside back is going to be visible so those are my fingernails but you'll get you get the gist of it if you have something poking that fabric you're going to see it from the front and we don't want that you also don't want it so short that your glue doesn't have anything to hold on to so about this length is great. You could even go just a little bit longer to where you're almost touching that, and but you're not touching the inside fabric all the way. Does that make sense? You guys definitely holler if you need me to show you something again. Now, when it comes to gluing, I like to use a glue gun. I like the speed of a glue gun. It dries very, very quickly. But I know that there are some people that just despise glue guns, and so <laughs> it's entirely your choice. You're welcome to use something like an Eileen's Tacky Glue or something like that if you want to. But the, the thing that I love about this is that it's fast. I don't have to hold these, this fabric in place for ages, and you, you do run that risk of burning your fingers a little bit. But they do make those silicone fingertips now that are on Amazon, they're crazy cheap. They're almost like silicone thimbles. So pick up some of those if you're worried about burning your fingers. Protect your fingertips, <laughs> finger fingerprints. I've since long since burned mine off ages ago, so I don't worry too much about it. So what I usually do is I kind of start at the top because I especially want if your some hoops fit at the top tighter than others. So some of these, you know, depending upon what your fabric is, you're going to have a bigger gap there. And I always want that piece to lie really flat. So I usually start at the top with my gluing. So I'm just going to show you, I'm going to run a bit of glue right in here. And I didn't grab an extra glue stick, even though I thought get an extra glue stick. And I didn't. So I might have to just put you on hold here if we run out. So I did get my glue just the tiniest bit close to that inside fabric and I'm using my fingernail to kind of wipe that off so that it's not touching that inner fabric. So I'm just adding a little bit of glue and I'm gluing down that piece. Can you see how that's now glued to the inside? 
And I kind of do this at an angle so that I can see where I'm going and I can just run my tiny little bead of glue. You don't need tons, but you want enough that your fabric will hold. And then I'm just using my fingernail to kind of push that down and hold it in place so that it doesn't come back up. Okay, can you see how that's working? Allison agrees that the silicone tips are <laughs> helpful. They really are, especially if you do a lot of wreath making or anything like that where you're just using a lot of hot glue. Okay, so we're gonna just keep going and you just go all the way around your hoop until it is finished. Now there's fun ideas that you can do with your hoop if you don't wanna use pom-pom trim, which I feel like is a little bit, you know, now, I was gonna say sacrilegious, but that makes me sound way more important than I actually am. But I do love pom-pom trim, you guys. But if that's not your jam, you could wrap your outer hoop in fabric with fabric strips. I have instructions for how to do that in my book. And it makes a really sweet way to frame your project without actually adding a trim to it. And you would want to do that before you do this step. So if you're going to wrap your outer hoop in fabric like this you would want to do that first then put it in on your design and then glue the inside like that because it's too hard to to separate these once you have it and have it looking right once you've glued this down so I'm just doing the last little bits here without burning myself I'm almost at the tail end <laughs> just one little section left and that really takes care of gluing all of our fabric down. Now you can leave it like this if that is your look. The other thing that you can do is these are all unfinished wood hoops are, most hoops are, but you can also stain this or paint it. So again, I would do that, actually if you're gonna stain or paint, I highly recommend doing that several days before you want to finish your hoop. You want that stain or paint to be completely dry before you put this outer hoop on your fabric. So just separate out the hoop, paint the outer ring. You don't need to paint the inner ring because it never shows, but paint or stain the outer ring and then definitely make sure you have at least 48 hours before you put your ring on your fabric because if there's any damp stain or paint as you push this onto your fabric and tighten it, you're, you risk transferring that stain to your fabric. And you can ask me how I know that. <laughs> so you want to make sure if you stain it or paint it that after you've given yourself that 48 hours that you take a paper towel and run it all the way around that inside and outside that hoop and make sure there's no lingering oils or anything like that from the stain but that does make a really pretty finish to a hoop if you don't want to use a pom-pom trim or if you do so you can leave it like this and it looks darling i often hang mine from the um the the between the screws here so that the nail hangs on the screws but you can also hang it from the inside of this back piece if you would want to so that's a fun way to finish it but you guys know i love pom-pom trim so we're gonna add that on now. And I have a giant roll of pom-pom trim. So what I like to use for pom-pom trim is Simplicity pom-pom trim. And it's made, so it's either called Simplicity or Rights. They're the same company, W-R-I-G-H-T. And you can find this at Amazon, which I've linked to how to get this giant roll. I use a lot of pom-pom trim, so I buy it in the big rolls. And there is 12 yards on here. You would probably only want to do that if you want a lot of your trims to be the same. But you can also find this exact same trim on smaller, like those smaller little cardboard, cardboard stools at Joann's. And then um, the trim, the pom-pom trim at Hobby Lobby is not too bad, but it's just not as sturdy uh, the braid isn't as sturdy as this rights um, simplicity trim I really like trim that has a good size pom-pom it doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart or look distorted and I really like trim that has this kind of double hanging thing sometimes there's only one 
braid that hangs the pom-pom and those tend to be a little bit more uh, not flimsy but and I like a nice big braid the thing that I love about these is that I can use these on my hoop projects but because it's so durable I can also use it on sewing projects because you guys know I love to put these on pillows and things like that too so there are this is why I love this brand the most so I have quite a bit of this you can definitely use the other brands and of course I do there's tons of brands you know you can find pom-pom trim at Walmart and any place like that and I have done that if I'm trying to find specific colors because of course every company doesn't make all the colors in the world so <laughs> you just have to make do sometimes and once it's on the hoop it's not a huge deal but I just really do love the quality of this brand so simplicity or rights I have linked to this um, this exact spool on Amazon if you want to check that out they I have um, a really great pink from them. They make like a navyish that has a bit of a teal undertone. They make gray, white, red, and I think black. So they definitely make some good choices. But I'm using white so that it kind of stands out. It's a little bit easier to see in person, but so that it contrasts with my pink linen. And I just cut that end off so that there is a little piece here on the end that I can use to kind of start my project. So it doesn't matter a whole lot which side is up because you're going to be gluing it so that the braid is on the edge, the back edge of your hoop. You want those pom-poms to extend past the end so you're going to glue it like this. <laughs> Janice says she grew up in the late 60s with a mother who used pom-poms everywhere. So nostalgic. Well, that's awesome. I think she and I would have been good friends. <laughs> so I am going to just start gluing this around the back side of the hoop. So I'm just going to run a bead of glue here and I'm just running it on the back of that. And you don't want to do the entire thing because if you haven't worked with hot glue before, you know that it dries quite quickly. That's one of the things we love about it. But if you were to glue your entire hoop, one, it would probably cool before you could get it all on. And two, there's a greater risk of you sticking your hand in the glue as you go. And that's really quite unpleasant, as you know. So I am just gluing in segments and I'm kind of turning the pom-pom trim as I go. It's very flexible with this braid, so it will, it will turn for you and make it a nice smooth curve. You don't have to worry about that. We are on the tail end of this glue, you guys. <laughs> it's going to be a Christmas miracle if we make it. So I am just kind of running this all the way around the hoop and pressing as I go, making sure that it's nice and flat. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Maybe I should do it so that it's under the camera. And we might make it. So I just have one little segment left. And I'm trying to keep the amount of braid sticking out from the edge of the hoop as even as possible. So that if you can see any of the braid from the front side of the project, then it all looks even. So I'm just coming to the end there and I'm trimming. I need to add a little bit of extra glue to keep this. So I feel like I'm going to actually cut this pom-pom off because it's hitting behind the screw. So you can see what I've done here. I've gotten all the way to the end, but this pom-pom is right behind the screw. Well, that's going to go pretty close against the wall. So I am actually just going to cut that pom-pom off and I'm going to add a little bit of extra glue so I can seal where they overlap. And then you can use a bit of glue on the end of that braid. So I'm just kind of using my heat from my glue gun on the end of that braid to sort of seal that pump, that braid so that it doesn't fray any further. So I'm just going to press that down a little bit. So that is what it looks like with the pom-pom trim on it. Isn't it so cute? So for most of my hoops, this is where I stop. Because it's going on my wall, 
you can't really see the back. If somebody pulls off my hoop and looks at the back of my stitching, they just get what they're gonna get. <laughs> but this gives you a nice clean finish. But if I was going to give this as a gift, I wouldn't necessarily want them to see all this. So there's a couple options for you. I like to use wool felt or you can use scrapbook paper. Me and paper don't get along really well, so I don't use scrapbook paper for very many things at all. But I, I've seen a lot of people do it and it looks really, really pretty. So what you'll want to do is, this is a six inch hoop. You would cut a six inch piece of whatever your backing is. So I would use felt, somebody else might use paper. So you cut a six inch piece that matches the size of your hoop so if you're using an eight inch hoop, then you would cut an eight inch piece. And you're gonna glue that on top, and I don't have any felt to show you guys. But I would run glue all the way around here, and then I would place that on the back. And that, what, that gives it a very nice, clean back so that if you're giving it as a gift, they're not able to see your stitches, and they can still hang the hoop from this screw. You know, you can't hang it from in here at that point, but then it just looks really nice. The other times I would do that is if you're going to hang it in a window where you would have a lot of light coming through it. And the advantage to that is you can also, especially if you're giving it as a gift, you can sign, you could stitch on the felt, you could put a little label on it, you know, Mother's Day or whatever you want to do. And that way, you, that's on the back, they'll know who stitched it, they'll have a little memory for you, just like you would with a quilt. So, and that's really easy. That's all you have to do to finish a hoop in, a project in the hoop. It's super easy and fun, right? Does anybody have any questions? I wanna make sure that I didn't. So the pom-pom size on these, Stephanie, is one and an eighth inch. Well, that's the whole braid size. You know, if you click that link, Stephanie, in the video description, it tells you what the pom-pom trim, and they call it ball fringe. So same exact thing, ball fringe and pom-pom trim are the same. So they'll be able to tell you, if I'm looking at it on my, on my um, cutting board, it's about 5 eighths of an inch uh, for the little ball. So I'm gonna go back to the other camera here real quick since we're all done. <laughs> okay, I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was really easy, it's fun, I have uh, verbal and well written out instructions for you in today's video description so you can check that out there's two other projects in there that you might like to stitch that are kind of similar they're bouquet type projects if you loved this you might like those um, so those are in today's the link to today's post is in today's video description so you can check that out and those are at the bottom of that post if you go to my embroidery page on my blog there's a on my menu it says embroidery there are tons of free patterns there. There are a lot of different styles of things there, <laughs> everything from Harry Potter to floral things. So there's a lot of freebies and there are a lot of projects um, that are on my blog, as no, in my shop as well. So if you like the elements from Enchanted Meadow, we have, I have a hedgie there, I have a deer, I have some foxes and I have a couple different varieties of those. Some more whimsical like uh, maybe House in Wonderland style with little hats or glasses or things like that and some are just more like the floral animals. There are all kinds of projects on the on the shop as well. So if you want some other ideas, definitely check that out. And you can also pick up my book Retro Stitchery in my shop or you can buy it from Amazon or Barnes and Noble or any other place. Uh, Fat Quarter Shop has it, things like that. So there are lots and lots of places that you can find projects if you are wanting to do something next. Stitching is my favorite thing to do in the evenings. It's so relaxing. It's like I work all day and then it's like, even though sometimes it's still work, it's my, my I don't know, my therapy almost. <laughs> it's so relaxing for me. So don't forget to check the blog tomorrow for the RBD block challenge release. It's a really fun one, you're gonna love it. And then don't forget to enter this week's giveaway for the Fat Quarter Bundle of Enchanted Meadow, the Walk in the Woods quilt pattern and the retro stitchery book so that you have all kinds of stitching projects to do. And then make sure you join me back here next week as we kick off our new sew along for the Walk in the Woods quilt. It's gonna be a blast, you guys. I can't wait. 
So thanks so much for joining me on this little stitch along. I hope you had a really great time. Definitely post your photos of your finished projects. I'm already seeing some of them on Instagram and in our Facebook group. So I would love, love, love to see your projects. <laughs> I hope you guys had fun and I hope you have a great week. I will talk to you guys later. See you next Monday for our quilt along.